Join us as we take a trip around the globe to the most remote rainforest and vastest oceans. Yeah, we're embarking on a journey of a lifetime to meet the world's most fascinating people. Whether they live in isolation or share their traditions with tourists, these tribes are blowing our minds. From the tribe that feasts on blood to the tribe in the jungle that nobody even knew existed, these are the 20 scariest tribes you don't want to meet. Tota. Ever heard of the Tota people? They're a Dravidian ethnic group living in the mountains of Tamil Nadu, India. Tota folks speak Tota, a Dravidian language. But over the years, the number of Tota speakers has been on a decline. Their homes, called Muns, are distinct barrel vaulted huts made of bamboo and thatch. They're pros at dairy farming, especially raising buffaloes, and their rituals and ceremonies are linked to their pastoral lifestyle. The Tota people have a unique religious setup. They worship their deities through rituals, and a sacred dairy platform called Sacred Dairies, or Munder, is a big deal in their religious practices. Tota societies organized into clans, and their marriage customs raise eyebrows. They're polyandrous, meaning one woman can marry multiple brothers within a family. But it's not all smooth sailing. Like many indigenous groups, the Tota people are grappling with preserving their culture in the face of modernization and dealing with a declining population. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. And now it's time for our missing topic. The genes of this tribe carry DNA of a third unknown human species. Yes, this mysterious image claims to show an otherworldly being right here on our planet. But what exactly is it? And is it the real deal or an elaborate tribal costume? Even anthropologists aren't able to pin down the location of this eerie photograph. But what do you guys think? Use the hashtag missing topic in the comment section below to share your thoughts. Kaksinawa Let's dive into the world of the Kaksinawa, also known as the Huni Kun, an indigenous tribe living in the heart of Brazil and Peru. If you head to the western part of Brazil in the state of Acre, along with the border of Peru, that's Kaksinawa territory. They're part of the bigger Pano linguistic group living in the heart of the Amazon. The Kaksinawa people communicate in the Huni Kun language, part of Panoan language family. They're into elaborate body painting. It's not just art for them, it's a cultural statement with designs that carry some serious symbolism. Conducting the rituals are the Pajes, aka shamans. These spiritual folk are the go to for healing rituals and connecting with the spiritual realm. Ceremonial festivals, where singing, dancing, and storytelling take center stage, are the Kaksinawa way of celebrating their cultural identity and history. But the Kaksinawa face a big struggle, land rights. Their traditional territories are under encroachment. Despite this, they're pushing back, making efforts to preserve and revive their cultural practices. Jarawa Meet the Jarawa, an indigenous tribe called the Andaman Islands Home Sweet Home. They live in the Middle and South Andaman Islands in the Bay of Bengal, India's tropical paradise. The Jarawa tribe has been isolated for a long, long time. They're like the OGs of hunter-gatherer tribes, keeping it real outside of mainstream society. The Indian government is on their side, implementing policies to safeguard their bubble of isolation. Yep, the Jarawa people are all about tradition, relying on the forest and the sea for their sustenance. Fishing, hunting, gathering, they're the masters of the ancient arts. The Jarawa people also have their own distinct language, not sharing linguistic DNA with their neighboring tribes. Outsiders, including researchers and government authorities, have had a peek into Jarawa life. But here's the concern. Contact brings potential health risks, as they might not have the immunity to deal with our modern-day diseases. Policies are in place to protect this tribe and their way of life. Restricted access and limited outsider contact aim to keep them safe. And like many tribes, encroachment on their land and resources is a big threat. Logging, poaching, and other external pressures are knocking on their door. Baka, in the heart of Central Africa, nestled among the rainforests of Cameroon, Gabon, and the Republic of Congo, you'll find the Baka people, or as some call them, the Bayaka. These indigenous pygmy folks aren't just your average forest dwellers. They're the experts of adapting to the wild challenges. They're skilled hunters with an encyclopedic knowledge of flora and fauna. 
They've turned tracking and capturing game into an art form, but their bond with the forest goes beyond just survival. It's not just a resource, it's their cultural and spiritual lifeblood. Music and dance play a significant role in Baca culture, serving as expressions of their connection to nature and as a means of social bonding. However, the Baca face challenges today, including encroachment on their traditional lands, deforestation, and disruptions to their traditional way of life. Ms. Joe Piro Venture deep into the untamed Amazon rainforest of southeastern Peru, and you might stumble upon the mysterious Ms. Joe Piro, an indigenous tribe that's living off the grid. Hailing from the Pano linguistic family, they're expert hunter-gatherers, turning the rich Amazon biodiversity into their ultimate grocery store. They're known as the people of the fish, or as they call it, Ms. Jupiro. Yup, fishing is their way of life. Encounters with them, this tribe is rarer than a four-leaf clover. In fact, they're very rarely seen. This isolation, though, has turned them into enigmatic legends. Cultural anthropologists are scratching their heads because even they don't have the full scoop on their customs and rituals. But hey, good news. The Peruvian government and some other organizations are playing the role of rainforest bodyguards, ensuring the Ms. Jupiro's turf stays untouched and their way of life remains unharmed. I mean, Yano Mami. Let's head into the lush rainforest and towering mountains of the Amazon basin and encounter the Yano Mami, a tribe whose resilience and unique culture paint a vivid picture of life in the heart of Brazil and Venezuela. These indigenous people have crafted a traditional lifestyle mastering the arts of horticulture, hunting, and gathering. They live in communal circular dwellings, known as llanos or shabonos. These spaces aren't just homes, they're vibrant hubs for communal living and gatherings. The Yanomami, true to their roots, thrive on resource sharing and nurture a profound connection with the natural world. Pretty awesome, right? But here's where it gets even more fascinating. Enter the realm of shamanism a cornerstone of Yanomami society. Shamans are spiritual leaders and healers, orchestrating rituals that commune with the spirits of the forest. Yet it hasn't been all serene for the Yanomami. The encroachment on their lands, diseases brought in by outsiders, and clashes over resource exploitation have seriously threatened their way of life. In response, both the Brazilian and Venezuelan governments, along with international organizations, have stepped up with protective measures championing the cause of these resilient people. Aldea Sipia Just 80 kilometers from Manaus, you'll discover the Sipia indigenous community, located near the Tupé Development Reserve. Here, a blend of six ethnic groups and languages make up this vibrant tribe. With a modest population of 50 people across 15 families, the community relies on tourism and handicraft sales for their livelihood. And believe it or not, you can actually immerse yourself in a unique experience with the indigenous locals in the Amazon rainforest. Tourists can go and check out traditions, cuisine, music, art, and architecture shaped by centuries of existence. But it's not just a visit, it's an invitation to become a part of their world. This is known as indigenous ethnotourism, where eco-sustainability is not just a buzzword, but a way of life. You can even experience the profound spiritual wisdom passed down by the tribe's elders and dive into the ancient healing traditions guided by indigenous medicines. Yup, if you've ever wanted to connect with nature, then this is the place to do it. Whether you opt for a short stay or decide to camp overnight, the Sipia community welcomes you. Kamayura, welcome to the Jingu Indigenous Park in the heart of the Brazilian Amazon. In the village of Kamayura, life revolves around malocas, circular communal houses that are more than just shelters, they're the beating heart of their community. And the Kamayura aren't just sitting around, they're busy cultivating the land. Add fishing and hunting to the mix and you've got a recipe for survival that's been perfected over generations. These people, like many Amazonian tribes, are plugged into the spiritual. Nature isn't just a backdrop, it's a living, breathing entity that's deeply connected to Despite the challenges posed by encroachment on their lands and cultural changes, the Kamayura people have worked hard to preserve their traditions. Nukak The Nukak people, dwelling in Colombia's Amazon rainforest, live life on the move as nomadic hunter-gatherers. They construct temporary shelters while moving through their territory. Not only that, but they're experts at adapting to the seasons, utilizing jungle resources to help them survive all weather and terrain. But the Nukok face challenges that would make even the mightiest trees in the Amazon tremble. 
They were classified as uncontacted people until 1981 and have since lost half of their population, primarily to disease. Armed conflict and encroachment on their ancestral lands have knocked on their door, disrupting the harmony they've known for generations. Yet despite the disruption, the Nukok stand resilient. They're not just inhabitants of the Amazon, they're its custodians, facing modern challenges with ancient wisdom. Korowai This mysterious tribe lives in the forests of West Papua, Indonesia, and it's believed that they still live their lives pretty much identically to how they would have done over 10,000 years ago. With rumors of cannibalism and witchcraft, for decades many researchers had avoided this elusive tribe at all costs. With no access to modern medicine, roads, or technology, the Korowai people were oblivious to the Western world until 1970, when a group of researchers traveled across the world to study their way of life. Anthropologists found that the Korowai tribe lived in homes elevated on giant stilts in the trees, sleeping high up in the canopy. It was reported that this was to protect the tribe from the evil spirits that haunted the jungle below. However, more recent visits have shown that not all of the Korowai people live in houses this high up, and some houses may have even been bought and paid for by film production companies who wanted to make the Korowai way of life look more extreme than it really is. Today, it's estimated that there are still around 3,000 of them living a traditional way of life in the rainforest of Indonesia, although relatively little is known about their society. Mercy Located between the River Omo and the River Mago, the Mercy tribe, also known as the Mersu or the Mun, they are a Nalotic ethnic group in Ethiopia, and according to the 2007 National Census, there are at least 7,500 people belonging to the Mercy tribe today, most of which live in one of the most remote and isolated regions of the country. They're known for being one of the last tribes in Africa where women wear large wooden or clay plates in their lips, some of which can reach epic proportions. But it's not just women who practice body modification. The men also use scarification on their shoulders to show how many enemies they've killed and shave elaborate patterns into their hair. Male members of the tribe also engage in ceremonial dueling, a violent ritual which is known as Thajin. Not only that, but Mercy men must prove they're ready to marry by battling an opponent using a large stick. Yep, no matter if you're a man or a woman, you gotta be pretty tough to be a Mercy. Angu Meet the Angu, or as their neighbors playfully call them, the Kuku Kuku, a pint-sized powerhouse with a reputation that echoes through the remote mountainous realms of the Papuan Gulf. Standing at less than five feet tall, these folks might be short in stature, but their history is anything but small talk. The Angu are known for their killer surprise raids on unsuspecting villages in the lower valleys. Despite their petite frames, they struck fear into the hearts of more peaceful tribes, armed with distinctive stone clubs. These mountain dwellers were like the action heroes of their time, leaving a trail of legendary tales in their wake. In the Aseki district, some tribes have become tourist magnets for their mummies. Forget about your regular burial chambers, these turn death into an art form. Making every mummy requires a month-long smoking session, bamboo tubes piercing stomachs, and sticks in every natural opening. Once all the fluids are out, it's a DIY mummy makeover with an ochre coating. These mummies then get VIP treatment, perched on special chairs in the mountains, watching over the living like ancient guardians. So there you have it, Yangu, a short but fierce tribe with a killer past and a knack for turning death into a spectacle. Awaguaha We're diving deep into the heart of the Amazon rainforest, where the Awa tribe, also known as the Guaha or Awaguaha, is fighting to keep their unique way of life alive. These folks are rarely seen but have been making headlines in a recent video captured by a neighboring tribe. The Awa are facing threats from logging, the oil industry, and even their own government. Since the 1800s, around the time when European colonizers barged in, the Awa tribe said no thanks and embraced a nomadic lifestyle to dodge unwanted visitors. Fast forward to today, about a hundred of them remain hidden deep in the jungle, maintaining their isolation. But survival isn't just about dodging outsiders, it's about thriving in the wild. Awa kids craft their own bows and arrows, learning the art of the hunt from a young age. Family trips turn into epic quests for nuts and berries, and extended hunts last for weeks, with makeshift shelters and torches made from tree resin keeping them going. 
and they've got primate pals. Yeah, baby monkeys are sometimes kept as pets in the Awa tribe. In 2012, the organization Survival International, led by none other than actor Colin Firth, launched a global campaign to shield the Awa from the looming threats. Kawahiva, welcome to the wilds of Mato Grosso, Brazil, where the Kawahiva, formerly known as the Rio Pardo Indians, are living a real-life hide-and-seek game with the outside world. These uncontacted indigenous folks near the city of Coniza are like the mysterious guardians of the Rio Pardo, leaving behind a trail of arrows, baskets, hammocks, and communal houses. Neighboring tribes dub them the Tiny People. They're a tribe so elusive that their modern existence only became known in 1999. But since then, deforestation, illegal logging, and downright sinister attempts to harm them have put their survival on the line. In 2005, the Brazilian government even investigated a potential genocide against them. Finally, in 2012, their territory became an official reservation, giving them a fighting chance against the encroaching threats. Now here's where it gets intense. Survival International, the superheroes for indigenous rights, speculate that their women might have even stopped giving birth to babies. Bajo. We're diving deep into the fascinating world of the Bajo, the sea nomads of the Indonesian seas. These aquatic people aren't just your average tribe, they're underwater superheroes. Yup, the Bajo, often called sea nomads, are the true ocean pioneers. Their history reads like a maritime epic, with ancestors who were boat-dwelling nomads cruising the waves of the Sulu Sea. The Bajo have unlocked the secrets of freediving, exploring the ocean's depths like merfolk. Normal humans might need a scuba tank, but these sea nomads? They can survive on a fraction of the oxygen. That's because they have stomach muscles that perform underwater acrobatics to control air diffusion while freediving. Not only that, but they can see crystal clear without any fancy goggles. They're basically the Aquaman and Aquawoman of real life. Unfortunately, even aquatic superheroes face challenges, particularly global warming and environmental degradation. The health of coral reefs, their traditional fishing grounds, is taking a hit. As corals bleach and ecosystems decline, the delicate balance of the maritime world crumbles. Zoe, deep into the heart of the Amazon rainforest, the Zoe tribe, a small and secluded community, call the lush greenery of North Brazil home. Their story reads like an ancient tale, only making contact with the outside world in 1987 when new tribe missionaries built a base on their land. In this haven of nature, the Zoe live in large, rectangular, thatched houses open on all sides. But what sets the Zoe apart? Brazil nuts! These prized treasures not only make up part of their diet, but are also a big part of their culture. The nutshells transform into bracelets, and the fibers create hammocks. Now that's genius. Now let's talk relationships. The Zoe are polygamous, where both men and women can juggle more than one partner. Equality reigns supreme, there are no tribal leaders, everyone's on an equal playing field. And then there's one of their most eye-catching features, a long wooden plug in their lip. From the youngest to the oldest, everyone rocks this unique accessory. Zoe children take it a step further with a rite of passage, the piercing of the lower lip. As the story goes, an ancestor passed down the art of the lip plug, using a sharp bone from a spider monkey's leg. The ceremony unfolds, usually around seven for girls and nine for boys. With time, the plugs grow larger, becoming badges of maturity. Skeleton Tribe This intimidating remote tribe live in the mountains of Papua New Guinea, and they're famous for their elaborate body paint and terrifying attire. The Chimbu Skeleton Tribe were once known for dressing up as corpses to psychologically disturb their enemies, but now it's thought that they only paint themselves in this creepy manner for special occasions and celebrations such as festivals. Using black and white body paint made from natural materials, they cover themselves from head to toe to create the illusion of being a supernatural being or a walking skeleton. We can see why this would freak out your enemies. The Chimbu speak a language called Kuman, which is one of 800 languages spoken in Papua New Guinea, and it's believed that they didn't have any kind of contact with the Western world until 1934. We wonder what the first international visitors thought of the Chimbu tribe. This isolated community has nailed it when it comes to making a horrifying first impression. Dogon Welcome to the intriguing world of the Dogon, 
the West African Wizards of Wisdom residing in Mali's Central Plateau region. These folks, numbering between 400,000 and 800,000, aren't just your average ethnic group, they're the keepers of ancient tales that'll make your jaw drop. Thousands of years ago, before Wi-Fi and smartphones, the Dogon's legends tell of celestial visitors, known as the Nomo, hailing from the Sirius star system. These beings delivered cosmic knowledge to the Dogon people. Long before the West caught up, these cosmic scholars actually knew about Jupiter's moons, Saturn's rings, and the Sun's status as the solar system's center. They also knew about the Big Bang. But here's where it gets mind-boggling. The Dogon casually mentioned an invisible companion star orbiting Sirius, a nugget of wisdom that science couldn't confirm until 1970. Scientists today are scratching their heads, wondering how this ancient tribe, without high-powered telescopes, had astronomical awareness that rivals our most advanced space agencies. Looks like the Dogon are the unsung heroes of cosmic knowledge. Hamar the Hamar people reside in southwestern Ethiopia, east of the Omo River, with villages in Termi and Demeka. According to the 2007 National Census, their population was 46,532, with 957 living in urban areas. Renowned for body adornment, they wear an array of colorful beads, with women favoring heavy polished iron jewelry. And when it comes to looking fierce, these guys don't mess around. Clay isn't just for pottery. It's the Homar's go-to hairstyle product. They sculpt their locks into masterpieces, adding pigments in every shade of the rainbow, especially red and white. They're also famous for their unique ceremonies, like the bull leaping rite. Young men must succeed in this ceremony to marry, coming of age by leaping over a line of cattle. This initiation qualifies them for marriage, cattle ownership, and parenthood. The ceremony timing is determined by the man's parents and typically occurs after the harvest. Bodhi In a far-off corner of Ethiopia's Omo Valley, the Bodhi or Mien people follow a unique tradition where size matters. A lot. Their annual ritual, known as Kyle, centers around a six-month feast where young men consume copious amounts of cow's blood and milk, all in a bid to claim the title of the fattest man. The scorching temperatures add urgency to the feast as the men gulp down the two-liter bowl of blood and milk quickly before it thickens in the hot weather. When the ceremony day arrives, the men emerge from their huts, bodies adorned with clay and ashes. The winner of this unique competition becomes a lifelong hero, celebrated by the community. Yup, in this beauty contest, being overweight scores you even more points. Post-ceremony, life returns to normal for most of the contestants with the once engorged bellies slimming down after a few weeks of eating less. Yet the Bodhi's traditional lifestyle faces a looming threat from the Ethiopian government's plan to resettle 300,000 people on their lands. Could this spell the end of the Kael ritual?